you need you need sort of more brown faces or you need diversity within your workplace. Mm. I guess when it comes to a workplace, do you want diversity? <coughs> but, oh, sorry, bro. Diversity or do you want the best people for the job? Now that sort of has a lot of issues around that as well. Do we live in a meritocracy where it's the people that work the hardest and, and can do the job, get the job? Or is it, do you just want to feel <coughs> different? Do you, do you want to look diverse and and multicultural, whatever you want. And not even just culture, right? It's also, you know, sexual orientation, all that sort of stuff. Mm. You need to have X number of gays, X number of transgender, whatever it is. And that's the whole, That's I think that's the big thing with the whole intersectionality of this sort of society now, where you have, it's no longer just about, um, you know, how much melanin you have in your skin. It's not just about where your ethnicity is from. It is about what is your sexual orientation? Because you have human resources department that say, well, if you've just got a whole bunch of straight white males here, well, that's not very diverse. I mean, how are you going to encourage people not from that group to get into this particular organisation? So that's where I think a lot of the arguments come in. If you bring in diverse people, mm -hmm. maybe that'll bring in other people of that particular group, and then you'll have your diversity. Diversity can be a strength, but diversity at the same time can be quite intolerant. If you don't agree with you know some of the views of the people in those groups does that make sense mm. so i mean you see a lot of um issues now with again human resource departments and probably like the guy that came and spoke to you that says yep you need more brown faces here again well you can tell us that i mean are you going to set up programs for us to go into schools and encourage that um, or are you just gonna yeah you know, how, how do you propose that happens yeah. and then again that comes back to again the education system that we have is it shaped to do that is it happening at primary school intermediate so let's call it intermediate primary school intermediate high school yeah. are you getting that's when they have those career fairs and careers guidance counsellors and you know unless you get with those career guidance counsellors say oh no just play rugby bro you'll be right <laughs> no bro you're one injury away from from being done and then you have to find something else yeah. so yeah it's it's and there in, in New Zealand it's yeah, I mean, yep, you want to see more people achieving in those fields, but people have to want to, I think, achieve mm. in that field. They have to they have to be willing to walk down that path and do the work like mm. you did or whatever the field is. And people, it's not to say that our people can't. Um, I, I, you guys had um, Lesina on uh, back. And so after I finished my time at Tuakana Arts, I went over to the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences and I helped coordinate basically a similar program to Talk and Arts. It was called MAPES. And that was the Māori and Pacific Admission Scheme. That program it was actually a quota system, a quota program that started back in the 70s. So have you heard of it before? No. Oh, okay, cool. So I'll, so I'll share a bit of information on how it sort of relates to the lesson as well. So the, the MAPES program, and again, another equity program, another affirmative action program, because again, you didn't have many... Uh, Maori and Pacific doctors, nurses, pharmacists, health professionals. And that's one thing, you know, we're still struggling with today, right? You've got people like Lesina and a few other people that are, that are coming through. This particular um, MAPES program or scheme had been in place during the 70s, uh, yeah, from the <coughs> 70s. And what happened was, basically, if you're Maori or Pacific, you know how to become a doctor or get into the, the medical program, you'd say you needed an A. They were letting Māori and Pacific Island students that were getting C's or B's in into the medical schools or into these programs as well. Now, do you think that's going to cause problems for other people at all? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's going to cause some problems. Um, and so that, that happened for a few years. And, um, and some students that came in under that scheme, under that program, were able to finish. I mean, Dr. Elena Curtis, who I, I worked with in the faculty years later, and she's now the um, the director of that, that particular program, Vision 2020. Um, she came through that program, and she was able to become a doctor, and then she actually came into the academic field. Now she's an associate professor. Um, but she talked about there were a lot of people that came in with C's, and then they flunked out. They failed because they couldn't handle the six, seven years of medical school. And so by the time <coughs> I moved over into the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences, I was a, a, a MAPES coordinator. So I coordinated uh, the program. Again, like the Tuakana kind of Arts program, a pastoral care and academic support. So we had the same thing. You basically had a, a coordinator who could sit down with you. If you're having problems, go and see your MAPES coordinator, which would be me, and I'll sit down and be like, what's wrong with you? And they'll be like, and they'll tell me, and they'll try and help them. And then we had those additional, again, just like in Tour kind of Arts, these additional tutorials specifically for Māori and Pacific Island students. 
what we or what I found in my time within that program as well as the Tuakana Arts program is that not all students are geared up to be university students. People go to university and, and in this case because it's in Auckland, the University of Auckland, they went there because their parents wanted them to go or they wanted to save face. We had students in those programs that were in there for like 10 years that would fail and then come back and fail. Whenever you talk about any sort of um, organisation, you always talk about um, recruitment and retention of customers or in this case students. And so we had, I mean, the pass rates for a lot of these Māori and Pacific Island students that were coming through, this is, in a, I'll be specific here, at the University of Auckland within the Faculty of Arts and within the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences was quite bad. And that's because a lot of them were being led into the program with lower grades than what they should have had. If they didn't get a bursary or whatever it was to make it in there. Um, by the time I got in there, and this is where Dr. Elena Curtis was really good, as they started to change, we had an interview process whereby... Um, oh, sorry. So when you got in there, was it still the C to get in? No, and that's what I'm getting to oh, now. Okay. So so by the time, and that, basically that was the history of it. Yeah. And so by the time I got into saw the, the MAPES program, um, they had an interview pro uh, interview process. They'd come down to uh, uh, Waipapa, the marae down at, uh, at the... Um, at the university, they'd sit down with, with Māori and Pacific uh, academics and they'd be interviewed by them, and I used to do them as well because I was a, a coordinator, and we'll try and figure out what's the best pathway for you, what qualifications have you come in with, and what pathway is going to allow you to eventually come what it is you want to become. Most of them want to become doctors. So you might have a student that didn't quite have the grades to, to get into the medical program straight away, overlapping year one, and so we would recommend them to do, and we'd say, yeah, you're not going to be. You don't have the grades to go straight into the program. You should do the certificate, and, I, and then later I ended up tutoring and lecturing, lecturing sort of thing, on the certificate in health sciences. That was basically a, a program for Maori and Pacific Island students that didn't go straight into um, the degree programs. They started at a certificate program. A number of those students have gone through the, the certificate, gone through the degree. They're out there practicing. They're out there saving our people, which is awesome. Um, but for a lot of them that came through, would recommend the certificate. They didn't want to do it. They're like, no, no, I'm going to be a doctor, so I need to be in that program. Well, first of all, and we'll take them through testing as well, like numeracy and literacy, bit of an interview process. I think when you have sort of interventions like that from and with people that have actually gone through what you're trying to do, if you want to become a doctor, yeah, you need to actually listen to people that have gone through that university, that faculty, and become doctors and and know how what you need to do and listen to them mm. and so again as i said a lot of them end up doing the certificate program and then they got into the degree programs and then they became health professionals a lot of them got onto the certificate program failed that and realized oh no uni's not for me yeah. and yeah i think i'm going to go do something else some of them went into other faculties within the university some went to law went to arts other people just went to other jobs so i, I think whenever you have a i guess a program whether it was talk kind of arts or the map has program um, you need an interview process or a way to sit down with people f before they come in mm. uh, you don't want to have people come in and set them up to fail and as I said, uh, Lucina, she was one of the um, she was one of the MAP students. She was one of the really good uh, MAP students. I think actually she probably would have been able to go straight into the program uh, into the she had the grades. And that was the other thing. Sorry, I'm not saying that all the Maori and Pacific Island students that came through the program and came to the interviews and went through the MAPES program were C students. Some of them were A students. Some of them were B students. Some of them were C students. The ones that tended to be they obviously worked hard, even if they were C or B students, they were the ones that got through. The ones that were A students, they actually were fine because they already had the work ethic. They already had the, the education behind them. They had the family support. They had, you know, that a lot of them, a lot of them I found in my time, maybe didn't have quite have the same cultural identity because they were brought up in Kiwi culture, but a lot of them picked up things being part of the MAPES program and then all that sort of stuff as well. So it's, it's encouraging to see that, you know, a lot of them, when I go into the hospitals now and you sort of see them now as nurses, you see them as pharmacists owning their own pharmacies. You see them as doctors, which is important because it's, you know, one thing to see them. When you go to the doctor and you see another brown face, they're like, oh, you're yeah, sweet. <laughs> it's a bit like when you go to court. When I go to court now, it's like, oh, you see another brown face. Like, oh, I'm not the one on trial. Oh, sweet as. <laughs> I'm not the one that could end up, well, maybe. But, but, you know, when you see another brown face, like you said, mm. when you see another brown face, that will encourage you to move into that space. Mm. 
it's very hard to move into a space if you don't see another brown face or someone that looks like you. Mm. Unless you really, really, really want to go there. If you, know, if you don't have the role modeling, whether it's your parents or older siblings, it's very hard to move into a space. But if you really want to move into that space, well, then you, like yourself, you find a way to do it and you get in there. So, so yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely fun to teach on the certificate. Um, and we, you know, we talked about Pacific Health and Maori Health and all the um, socioeconomic factors, which are important, the determinants of health, and why our our people again are at the bottom here, and we've got all the worst outcomes uh, for health as well. And that's that encouraged those particular students even more to study hard, to complete the courses, to complete the degrees, to get out there into the workforce because we need them. Yeah, we need them. Even if they end up on the bachelorette or the bachelor, <laughs> why not? Hey, if if you can, why not? So, wear different hats. It's, it's fun to wear different hats. Uh.